Hi, thanks for joining me for today's devotion. This is the first in a series of three devotions on the three solas of the Lutheran Reformation. Sola means alone, and the three solas are we're saved by scripture alone, saved by faith alone, and saved by grace alone. Today, saved by scripture alone, and our reading is Revelation chapter 22, verses 18 to 21. I warn everyone who hears the words of the prophecy of this scroll. If anyone adds anything to them, God will add to that person the plagues described in this scroll. And if anyone takes words away from this scroll of prophecy, God will take away from that person any share in the tree of life and in the holy city, which are described in this scroll. He who testifies to these things says, Yes, I am coming soon. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. The grace of the Lord Jesus be with God's people. Amen. Let's say the doctor prescribes you some strong pain medication after dental surgery, and he says, take two pills every four hours as needed for pain. Later on, your friend is visiting you and you're in a lot of pain, and your friend feels sorry for you. She says, I think you can take at least two pills every four hours. Who should you listen to, your doctor or your friend? Well, if you're in pain, you might be tempted to listen to your friend, but it would be wiser to stick to what your doctor said. In the early 16th century, Martin Luther was in a similar situation. Scripture says that we're saved by faith in Jesus alone, apart from doing any good works. But the leaders of the church were saying that we're saved by faith together with the good works that we do. Who should Martin Luther listen to, the Bible? Or the Pope. It would have been easier and in some ways safer for Luther to have gone with what the Pope says, but he didn't. This was too important. At stake was Luther's eternity as well as the eternity of all those he taught. Luther went with the more difficult choice. He went with Scripture. And when the Pope sent someone to quiet Luther down, Luther said publicly, a simple layman armed with Scripture is greater than the mightiest Pope without it. He was saying that we are saved by scripture alone. It's an inspiring story, but it's more than that. The battle for scripture alone didn't start with Luther and it didn't end with him. Scripture itself warns us not to add or subtract. That means that the warning is for all people of all time. We need to be on our guard because scripture is constantly under attack, not only from outside the church, but also from people who call themselves Lutherans. There are many who say that scriptures are inspired by God, but then they turn around and add that there are some factual errors in secular matters. They say that scriptures are true, but then they turn around and say, you don't necessarily have to believe in all the miracles to learn the truth that God loves you for Jesus' sake. Hardly anyone is left in the world who still teaches that the scriptures are completely factual and without error from start to finish. But it's not just how people teach, it's about how people live. And here's where we all have something to confess. We are tempted to live as though we've taken away certain portions of scripture, especially those parts that show how serious God is about punishing sin. Isn't it easy to begin to think that our sins aren't so bad? We are tempted to live as though scripture alone isn't enough that we have to add our own personal goodness into the mix. In fact, isn't it easy to begin to think that we're such good people that we hardly need to read scripture at all? You and I have caved into these temptations. and God should add to us the plagues described in this book. God should take away our share in the tree of life and the holy city. Instead, he sent us a substitute. He sent his son in human flesh to be holy in our place. And he was. Jesus faced off against every one of Satan's temptations to mess with Scripture, and Jesus remained sinless. Not only did Jesus teach Scripture perfectly, he lived it perfectly too. And then our holy substitute went to the cross. And there on the cross, Jesus' place in the holy city was taken from him. And the plagues described in Scripture were laid on him. He took all the consequences of all our sins. And he offered the world his holiness and his perfection in their place. You cannot help but marvel at God's love. Think of your Savior, Jesus, and how ordinary he is. Do you see 
God has come down to your level and mine. He wants to be our friend. He wants to be close to us. And he wants us to be close to him. That's just the kind of love from God you see when you look at Scripture. And think of how ordinary Scripture is. God doesn't speak in riddles. He doesn't use hidden meanings. He uses plain, common human language. He comes down to our level so that we can see and understand who he is. And by that simple word alone, with no help from you or me or any other source, he works faith in our hearts. Such love from God. No wonder the devil is working so hard against it. Satan can't undo Jesus' sacrifice on the cross. His only option is to attack God's word. So that's where he has marshaled all his troops. That's where he fires away morning, noon, and night. He tempts false teachers from outside of the church and from inside the church to add, to subtract, to twist the meaning of what God says. So step up your Bible knowledge. Dig in with everything you have. Be like the Bereans who searched the scriptures every day to see if what their pastor was telling them was true. Be so sure of what scripture says that you can instantly spot every temptation to add or to take away from it. And when the going gets tough, when what's happening in your heart and life has you questioning the value of scripture, remember the promise God has attached to scripture. It's a promise for the church of all ages, and it's a promise for you and me. He says, heaven and earth may pass away, but my word will never pass away. Some warnings are intended to keep people away from something, like a sign that says, bridge out. The warnings at the end of Revelation are posted to draw us in. What could be so important, so valuable, that God would protect it so carefully? Here behind the warning not to mess with things is, God, is his perfect, inerrant, infallible, unchanging word. It is a word that works like a wake-up call for sinners, a word that reveals the story of God's saving love for us in Jesus, a word through which God gives us life, faith, peace, and hope. Each day, you and I are up against a boatload of trials and temptations. Each day, Scripture is all we need. We are saved by Scripture again alone. So now listen again to a portion of the scripture that is in front of us today. He who testifies to these things says, Yes, I am coming soon. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. The grace of the Lord Jesus be with God's people. Amen. See you next time.